Arch Advocate Podcast. I am your worthy host. I am Pete Dobson, the El Chapo of podcasting. We got a lot to get to today. Old Petey's on a roll. Old Petey's looking at some things, man. And today, on all day, of course, it's, you know, it's that, uh, that old, uh, that cursed date. February the 13th. Ding, 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 ding. It's February 13th, and we got a lot to get to, but first, I'm going to read to you your daily devotional. Peace be with you. Ever since the resurrection, this has been my watchword to those who yearn for me. As you sit quietly, let my peace settle over you and enfold you in my loving presence to provide this radiant peace for you. I died a criminal's death. Receive my peace abundantly and thankfully. It is a rare treasure, dazzling in delicate beauty, yet strong enough to withstand all onslaughts. Wear my peace with regal dignity, and I will keep your heart and mind close to mine. Listen, there's a lot of things that, that, that can drive you crazy. Look, I, I, I've got a number of topics to get to today, and I'm going to be able to tie all of this in into one story. Story broke today. This is the one story. I'm going to tie everything. You watch. You stick around till the end of the podcast. For those of you watching on YouTube, it's going to be broken up into several different segments uh, today because, you know, people's attention spans are uh, shorter on, on YouTube. But everything I talk about today, I'm going to be able to tie back to this one story. And this one story is a trans weightlifter walks into women's league and sets new records. And they say... What a prodigy. Now, if you're watching on YouTube, I'm going I'm to try to get the, the picture of this fella, big fella, <laughs> big young man, but he's a grown-ass man. You look at the, If you can see this picture on YouTube, that man, between now and five years from now, will not grow an inch. He's grown. He is a grown man. A young man, sure, but a grown-ass man, and he's just... Uh, just blowing the, the, the lids off of records. Because he's, he's a dude. Now listen, here's the thing. Here's the infuriating part for those of us who think. Right? We all have liberal friends. We all, you know what I mean, family members. We can't get away from them. If they're not your friends, if they're not your co-workers, you know what I mean? Because co-workers, they're, even if you don't like them, they're your friends. They're the people that you hang out with for more than eight hours a day. What do you call them? Frenemy? Okay, whatever. But we all have people in our lives that are, they're, in, they're, they're locked into the, to the gaze of the nonsense. And you try to wake them up, don't you? It's like, well, wait a minute, wait a minute. How can you not see what's happening here? This is a man. He's, he's joined a women's league of weightlifting and he's blowing all the doors off of all the records. And you try to tell your friends, like, well... How, I don't understand what's happening here. That's a man. What, how, how is it that you don't see what's... What, you know what I mean? You go crazy. And the, the answer is, listen, they can't see it. You're asking, you're asking questions from a position of rationality. That's your mistake. You're making a mistake. You're assuming that because you are a rational thinking individual that they themselves have some sort of rational mechanism in their brain. Yeah, that's your mistake. No, no. They can't see it. Right? So, uh, uh, we're going to be coming back to this story because this is everything. Right? This, this is... When you look at these people, like for example, <coughs> we're going to look at the first story. So they just announced, uh, you know, the, the Senate hearing committee, they just came out and they announced that Donald Trump, there is no evidence of collusion. It's over. That's, that's the end of it. The Senate has spoken. There is no evidence that there was any collusion. Collusion. And yet, the, the, the talking heads on CNN and MSNBC, they won't stop talking about it. They won't stop talking about uh, the Russian collusion thing for at least another week. They're just going to keep going and going and they'll pepper it in 
over the course of the next year and a half until the 2020 election, then they'll bring it back up again. You watch. It's, these people are very predictable. But you can go to your friends and your, you know, your loved ones that are going to be sitting around your table at Thanksgiving that you're going to have a hard time with because we, you know, we all have the family members that are a pain in the ass. And you're going, to say, you're going to ask them, like, okay, look, we gave you two years. We gave you an unlimited budget. We gave you Bob Mueller, right? Donald Trump could have fired Bob Mueller the whole time, but he didn't. He could have fired him, and he didn't. And the reason why he didn't was because optically that would have looked bad. He just, but he gave him free reign and said, here's the purse strings. Just spend as much as you want. And over two years later, the Senate comes out and they announce there's no Russian collusion. There's zero evidence. There's nothing here. It's over. And your liberal fr- you know, co-workers at, at work and your family members that are coming over for Thanksgiving here in several months, they're going to they're gonna keep ch- just regurgitating that Russian collusion story. And you're going to bring up the fact like, no, 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 no. The, the, the people, right? The people in charge of that whole thing, they said... No evidence. We dug and dug and dug and dug, and there's just no water under this dirt. It's over. And they will say, Russian collusion, he was Russian. I do, he was, what about the Facebook ads? Blah, blah, blah. It's like, they can't see it. It's the same thing. You show them, there's people out there that are trans rights activists and you know everybody's equal activists, and here's a man. Here's a grown-ass man who just shows up one day and says, I'm not a man, I'm a girl. I want to I lift weights in competition with other girls. And he lifts more weights than all the other girls. You bring that up to these people and they're like, no, 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 no. They can't see it. You, and it's hard, it's hard to accept that, that they can't see it. And this, this is the problem. When... Uh, Okay, I, I'll tell you a story. When I was in uh, when I was in the Marine Corps, uh, in in training, right, MCRD San Diego, Marine Corps Recruit Training Depot San Diego. Uh, about the middle of, of boot camp, the second month of boot camp is when you do your rifle qualifications. There's a there's a longer story to tell, but I'm just going to skip to the end. You do your rifle qualification on a Friday, <clears throat> and on that Friday, uh, I shot. Expert. That's the highest you can get in the Marine in the Marine Corps. Uh, expert marksman. And is it expert or is it marksman? I can't remember. I got the two, uh, uh, you know, cross rifles with the wreath around it. Anyways, uh, I put it in the black all day, right? Put it in center mass all day long. However, the day before that was called a uh, pre-qualification day. And thank God that that's not the, the, the day that goes on the record. Because on that day, I hit everything but the target that I was supposed to hit. And the difference was, okay, so you know, on that Thursday, I missed everything. And the drill instructors came to me and they said, okay, what the hell happened? And this was like one of, the, one of I think, two times when a drill instructor spoke to me as if I was a human being. And the drill instructor and the, and the uh, PMI guy uh, came over and they're like, okay, what, what happened here? You were doing fine all week and all of a sudden you just, you miss everything? And I said to them, I was so nervous that I forgot my glasses or portholes as you call them uh, in recruit training. I forgot my glasses. I was so nervous and we were in such a hurry and I didn't want to, you know, confess to the drill instructor that I left my glasses behind because I didn't want to get in trouble. So I just decided to wing it, and I missed everything. So the next day, my drill instructor made sure that I had my glasses with me, and I put it in the black all day. You want to know why I missed everything on Thursday and hit everything on Friday? Because on Thursday, I couldn't see. I couldn't see it. I couldn't see the target. It was too far away from my eyeballs. That's why. These people that you deal with, you can take any issue, 
right? New York just legalized aborting babies at nine months. Virginia tried to slide one in and say, oh, we can abort them even after that. You talk to your liberal friends, as I have in the, in the days that it has gone, gone, gone past since that happened. And they're just like, oh, it's women's rights. It's women's rights. It's women's rights. They can't see it. They can't see it. That's why, that's why when you talk to them and you're scratching your head like, how do you not see what's happening? The reason why they can't see it is because they can't see it. Here's a, here's, a, here's a grown man who just walks into the ladies' locker room and says, Good news, everybody. I'm your new teammate. They can't see it. There's no Russian collusion. And the, the left just... Uh, uh, they're, they're like goldfish. They've got, the, they've got the, the, the memory of a goldfish. You bring up things like, Did you hear Peter Strzok's testimony? Did you see... Those, those texts that he sent to his, his uh, harlot of a girlfriend as he was cheating on his wife. Did you see those? Oh no, they can't, they can't see it. They can't see it. There's no point in talking to them. Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez comes out and talks even a, a greater amount of her hilarious nonsense, which I'm, you know... At this point, I'm really, you know, kind of like flat earthers and, uh, you know, uh, moon landing deniers. I'm really warming up to the idea of, like, maybe she's actually a Republican plant. You know what I mean? It could, because the stupidity of this woman. It, 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 but it's not just stupid. It's like, it's hilarious, the things that she says. It's funny. I get so much joy out of ever every time somebody releases something that's, that she says, I, my heart gets filled with joy and laughter. She was on she was on TV in that in that in the whatever Senate meeting or whatever it was the, the, the meeting where she w exposed that there's money in politics, and she was she was saying some things that you know everybody says. Like, hey, do you think it's, you know, do you think it's a good idea that people can just buy their way into politics? And she was going on and she was, she was saying things that I've heard people on both sides of the aisle say my whole life. Like, yeah, we got to get money out of politics. This is wrong. And at the very end of it, she puts a big red bow around it. And guess what that bow was? Guess what it wasn't? It wasn't. Hey, you know what? We should make it so that politicians can no longer vote for laws for themselves to shield them from exposure to, to the laws that the rest of us have to face, like they, like they face with liable and slander laws. Did you know that, that if a congressperson slanders you, they cannot be prosecuted? And would you like to know why that exists? Well, it's because they voted for a law for themselves. Do you know that whenever Congress people get a raise, do you know who votes to give them a raise? They do. It's like two wolves and a sheep asking, you know, uh, voting on what they want for dinner. <coughs> These are things that people have said the entire time. Like, this is something we have to fix. We need to get rid of it. And is that the point that she made at the very end? Like, you know what we need to do? We need to make some laws so that Congress people are no longer allowed to vote on their own interests. That's not what she did. Instead, what she did is she made that whole case, and then she made that case to be about the current sitting president of the United States. It's like, oh, no. Oh, no. You just destroyed your case. You're, you're, you're not trying to expose... The, the, the creepy, demonic behavior of Congress people who vote for slush funds so that they can pay off the victims of their rapes. That's not what you were trying to fix. You just wanted to bitch about the current sitting president. And we already knew that you didn't like the guy. You just wasted everybody's time in a very hilarious fashion. Thanks for the laugh. And when you bring that up to these leftists and you say, you see... Do you, do you see what she did there? I see what you did there. 
Do you see what she did there? She, she made a strong case, something that everybody feels. Yes, we need to get money out of politics. Yes, this whole thing with lobbyists and the amount of money that's involved there, that has to go. That has to go. We need actual punishments for politicians. We need a separate list of very harsh punishments. You know, the way that we have different punishments for different severities of crime. Stealing a candy bar gets one thing. Murdering a guy gets another one. Like, we need to have that same concept for people who have been endowed with the public trust. The trust of the people. And if you betray that trust, it's dangerously close to treason. It's not treason, not in every case, but it's awful close, and so we need to have severe laws. Had she gone that way, she could have had everybody in, but instead she went with all these problems that I'm talking about, that's all just Donald Trump. <clears throat> okay, then, so I guess you're just going to let Maxine Waters off the hook? You're going to let, you're gonna let uh, Captain Caveman from San Antonio, who's who he himself has been the beneficiary of those funds that have been set aside to pay for the rapes. You're just going to let that guy off the hook because your, your big beef isn't the corruption in politics. It's that you don't like that guy. You try to explain this to your leftist friends and they'll just be like, oh, I can't see it. I can't see it. And you can sit there and boggle your own mind and smack yourself in the skull and be like, what are you talking about? How can you not see this? Well, the reason is they can't see it. A grown-ass man is competing against women in weightlifting and kicking everybody's asses. Oh, this is a miracle. No, it's not. That's a dude. How dare you, you transphobic, bigoted, blah, blah, blah. It's like, they can't see it. They can't see it. <coughs> Trans weightlifter. I'll be, uh, I'll be tying that back in. Ilhan Omar. All right? Ilhan Omar is a... Uh, the, one of the new freshman Congress people just elected what, uh, another Muslim that's in Congress who has access to, uh, I'm, I'm assuming they have uh, some sort of secret clearance, right? Being Congress people. Ilhan Omar is from the nation of Somalia. She's not Somalian. She is a Somalian who was born in Somalia. Somalia has a national I, uh, IQ, just as every nation does. That particular IQ is lower than the world's smartest monkey. Well, technically chimpanzee. Coco the chimpanzee, I think Michael Jackson owned it. Remember that, that monkey that, that could do sign language? Could share its thoughts with the people around it? That was Coco. Coco had an IQ somewhere estimated somewhere between 70 and 95. It's the world's smartest chimpanzee. Somalia has a lower IQ than the world's smartest monkey, Coco, the chimpanzee. And somebody from that nation is now sitting on our Congress. I, is, I, I hope that helps you to sleep at night, <laughs> right? This lady goes on some just, an, you know, she's Muslim, so she hates Jews. That's like one of the... That's one of the tenets of Islam is you must hate Jews and Christians. Jews in particular. Christians, you can, you can get around to hating them, but the first, the, the first big problem that needs to be eradicated is the Muslims have to kill the Jews. That's right in the book. And this lady goes, this congresswoman, goes on her Twitter and says some I hate Jew stuff. Right? And you bring that up. Mike Pence came out and said, she, we need to think about, like, Figuring out a way to get this girl out of Congress. She's, this is crazy. We cannot have Congress people, particularly Congress people who are going to be sitting on a board of foreign affairs. Like, we can't have this. This lady's batshit crazy. The, the reason why she's this crazy is probably because she comes from a nation where the national IQ is literally lower than the world's smartest monkey. Mike Pence, you know, well, see, he didn't, you know, he didn't elaborate the way that I just did, but he, he, he came out and said, this lady's got to go. Donald Trump, the president, okay, just forget that it's Donald Trump, a sitting U.S. president, the current leader of this planet. I don't know, you can sit there and disagree with, with me all you want. 
The United States is an empire, and we are ruling the world. It's our turn. And the current leader of the world came out and said, she needs to think about resigning. I don't know if you know this or not, but that's a big deal. <clears throat> to have a sitting U.S. president even suggest that somebody needs to resign or be prosecuted or anything like that, that's a, it's a big deal because when that man speaks, the rest of the world has to listen to what he's saying. You bring up the fact that there is a sit of uh, these people, these virtue signalers who constantly are telling you, if you don't believe that a woman should be able to, to pass a baby through her vagina and then stab that baby with a scalpel and with some forceps and tear it apart, you're an immoral person if you don't think that woman should be able to do that. If you think that you don't want gay people around your children as they are growing up and, and learning the ways of society and culture, if you don't want those people around your children unsupervised, then you are a bigot. You're a hateful person, and in fact, you really don't deserve to be alive. You're a homophobic. That's what you are. If you are uh, the kind of person that doesn't want radical Muslims who think that, 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 you know, that whole death to America and death to the infidel uh, sort of thinking is, is, is okay. If you don't want those people living next door to you, then you're an Islamophobe. These people. If you don't think that a boy can just say, I'm a girl, and then start lifting weights and then take all of the, all of the trophies for weightlifting against girls, then you're a transphobe. When you talk to these people about, you know, these, these virtue signalers who are like, okay, so, okay, I, as far as I can tell, we can't say anything bad about anybody who's not white and a man. Can't say anything bad about anybody. So we can't say anything bad about the Jews, right? Because, you know, six million Jews died in World War II. Forget the fact that over 50 million people died because of uh, communism uh, under Stalin. But yeah, 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 Hitler's way worse. But we can now, we can no longer say anything bad uh, about the Jews, right? And yet, when your new rising star, the, the person who comes from a nation whose national IQ is lower than the world's smartest monkey, when she comes out and, and says a whole bunch of anti-Jew stuff, and you point that out to them like, well, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait, you said, you said you can't say anything bad about the Jews. They're a special little group. We can't say anything bad about them. They had a hard time 80 years ago. You can't say anything bad about them. You bring that up to them, and they won't be able to see it. All they see is, no, it's virtuous because she's black, and she's from Somalia, and she's a Muslim. They can't, they just, the reason why they can't see it is because they can't see it. They can't see it. The Senate just said, the, 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 the committee that was tasked with finding out if we have a Manchurian candidate running the planet, a Russian colluder, a puppet of Putin, those people, those people, they just came out and said, okay, everybody, it's over. No evidence. They can't see it. Okay, this lady... Who, hate, who has a religious obligation to hate the Jews, just came out on Twitter in front of everybody, said a whole bunch of hateful Jew stuff, and they can't see it. Yes, you can, you can, it's infuriating. The reason why it's infuriating is because you are trying to use reason with unreasonable people. It's the beast. Alright? This is... This is the problem. These people are animals, right? They're beasts. Do you get, do you, do you lose your mind and pull your hair out every time your dog barks? Barks through the night? Wakes you up in the middle of the night barking? You know? Like, you don't sit that dog down and say, now listen, here's the thing, all right? The guy walking down the street, that's just a dude. And he's minding his own business. And he's walking his dog. Right? That dog and, and his owner, like, they're friends. And they're, they're not trying to come and attack you. 
No, you don't do that. You don't say anything. Why? Because you know that your dog does not have the same ability to reason with you <laughs> as your children do. You, you know what I mean? You're trying to... These people, these liberals have gotten so far off of the reservation that they've just... They've turned into animals and they can't be reasoned with. So there's really no point in, in getting yourself all stressed out when trying to deal with these people. They're gone. I just had a conversation a couple days ago about this abortion thing with, with liberal Sam who lives in New York. He lives in Brooklyn. He voted for Ocasio-Cortez because he lives in her district. He's a lawyer. <clears throat> a new law passed. Saying you can now abort... Okay, a full-term pregnancy is 40 weeks. That's 280 days. It is now legal in the state of New York to terminate the life of a baby that is 280 days old. As long as his nose did not reach air, you can kill that baby. He can crown. The crown of his head can, can come out of the vagina. But if his nose passes, well, that's when he's really alive. They just passed the law. You can murder a baby. Babies have been taken out of the womb. I, I, have, I know somebody who had a baby taken out of the womb at 22 weeks old, and that baby is still alive and doing great. 22 weeks, not 40. And I asked him about it, and guess what I heard? Heeman and hawn, heeman and hawn, heeman and hawn, heeman and hawn, heeman and hawn. That same, oh, well, this, what about the woman's health? You mean to tell me that on week two, she didn't know if she wanted to have an abortion or not? Why, why is it now, why would you need, like, I'm, I'm against abortion altogether. I think it should never happen and it should be against the law and anybody who does it gets prosecuted. That's what I think. But you went from, from saying six weeks to eight weeks to 40 weeks. Why? why? Why do you think that was necessary for Andrew Cuomo to pass that law? Why is it that the whole room full of people that were there when he signed that, why did they all laugh and cheer? Why would you laugh and cheer about surgery? Why are you laughing and cheering about that? Why is it that, that the, the, uh, the governor of that state lit up downtown New York City in celebration of this new law? Why are you celebrating? Is this a happy thing for you? I've never known anybody. That was happy. That was happy. It, it, can you think of a single surgery that you could possibly get that you would be happy that you were getting? Surgery is done when tragic things have happened. Whoa, what about liposuction? Oh, you mean you're a big fat ass and you, you have to have fat removed from your body? I mean, good for you. You, you know, I've had, I've had a couple of friends that needed that particular type of surgery. It's not to be celebrated. <coughs> Something went horribly wrong, and now you need surgery. Oh, I got a big hooked nose, and it's, it's very unseemly, and I, I want to get rid of it. Tragic. It's tragic that you're in that situation. Yes, I'm glad that there's surgery available for you, but it's surgery. You're going to have to go all the way under, and they're going to have to break your nose, reshape it, take a bunch of stuff out, put some other stuff in. There's nothing to celebrate with surgery. The only time celebrating for surgery is when it's over and you lived. And now you're talking about a surgery that terminates the life of a baby that, could, that it definitely can live. And will live if it's properly taken, taken out of that womb. And you just, you just okayed the murder of that baby and you're celebrating. I'm asking my friend. Not friend, friend, but friend, I guess. I don't know what that meant. Don't ask me questions. What about that, Sam? Oh, well, you know, it says that only in certain circumstances. Yeah, it says mental health. It says if the mother's mental health is, at, is at, in, in risk. You know, what, you know what another way of saying that is? 
if the mother is in danger of what's called postpartum depression, which every woman gets to some degree or another. My wife has, has had postpartum depression twice, but you wouldn't have known it if you met her. I didn't even know it. She had to explain it to me. It was that subtle. So if a woman says, I, I just, you know, I'm at a place in my career right now. I just, you know, I, I meant to do this eight weeks ago. I meant to do this 20 weeks ago. I meant to do this 39 weeks ago, but I just, you know, I just didn't get around it. But the fact is I'm at a place in my career where, you know, if I have a shift in my, in my blood chemistry and I get postpartum depression, I just, you know, that's a mental health thing, man. I cannot be mentally unhealthy right now. I need you to take this baby out. Guess what, Sam? That fits into mental health, the category of mental health. You bring this up to the people and guess what? Guess, guess what he said to that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what he said. That's what they always say. And why is that? Because they can't see it. A grown man walks into a women's locker room, says, hello, everybody, I'm your new teammate, and then kicks all of their asses in the weightlifting uh, championship. You say, that's a man. That is a young man. He's a grown-ass young man. You're a transphobe. Okay, how are you not seeing this? It's frustrating, isn't it? You get very frustrated trying to get people. It's like, wait a minute, wait a minute. Do you not see? Look at the picture. That dude could probably kick a lot of people's asses. You see that dude? That's a dude. You're transphobic. Ah. How can you not see this? Well, it's really simple. If you take it slow, they can't see it because they can't see it. Tommy Robinson. Tommy Robinson was talking about him yesterday. So he's got, to, he's got a documentary coming up. <coughs> 10 days from today, February 23rd. He's got a documentary he's, he's releasing. Now, listen, Tommy's got a, a bit of a sordid past now, right? He's no angel. He, uh, he was convicted of fraud, uh, a, uh, uh, a mortgage fraud uh, years ago. And I don't know all the details. I, I, I studied into it the best I could. And uh, from what I could tell, he, he used somebody else's passport to fly from, the United, from uh, the United Kingdom to the United States. And there was something about his associates where, they, where some statements were made on mortgage paperwork that were false. And a bunch of people, including himself, were found guilty of fraud and uh, were prosecuted and punished. So there's that, all right? But uh, that, it's like, okay, well, that's bad. Would you like me to list all of the crimes that I've committed and got away with? You know what I mean? Like, I've done some things that I'm not proud of in my life, all right? So it's like, like, yeah, that's not a great look, Tommy, but... Let's find out what you're in the news for right now. Does it have anything to do with mortgages? Does it have anything to do with money? No. Here's this guy who's like, look, my government is importing these people that just got done living in the Stone Age. And they have barbaric religious beliefs. And they're, they're being imported into my country. And they're raping our women. I want this stopped. I don't want to feel all alone in this quest. I'm going to go tell other people and say, look at this. Look at this police dog. You see when this arrest was made? Look at these, these crime reports. Do you see, the, you see what these people, these criminals, they have in common? They all have the same re religious belief. And they all come from, a, from the same region of the world. They're not like us. And he got himself a following. And what was, what was his thanks for that? His own government, our people. Threw him in jail and prosecuted him, besmirched his name and, and exposed him and his family, who last I, you know, as far as I can figure, his kids have never committed a crime. Not even mortgage fraud. Right? He, his government exposed those innocent children to danger. You, you bring this up to people, I've met them. 
I worked. I, I went and volunteered at the, 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 uh, the refugee camp, quote unquote, in Calais, France, otherwise known as the jungle. I went and I talked with these leftists. And I said, now wait a minute here, wait a minute, wait a minute. These people are claiming refugee status by world, you know, global law, right? Because there's laws that apply to the whole world now. And one of those things is refugee status. And if you want refugee status, you have to claim it in the first nation that you come to once you've escaped your shithole nation. And these people skipped right over Italy, right over France, and dropped themselves right into England. You bring this up to people, they're like, well, this and that, and English is, and nobody wants to live in Italy, and blah, 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 blah. It's like, dude, it's the law. The reason why Western civilization is better one of the reasons is because we are a people of laws. We guide our civilizations with these laws. Hey, don't drink and drive your car. That's against the law. Why? Well, it really doesn't matter, but here I'll tell you anyways, because it impairs your judgment and you can kill people and yourself. But we don't need to explain that to you. Just don't do it. We have laws for that. Hey, don't lie to people when you're uh, lending money or borrowing money. Why? <clears throat> Don't murder people when you're very angry. You know, we have a whole bunch of laws. That's what guides our society. And when people come in and they just disregard our law, and they say, you know what, I'm not going to stop in Italy because Italy is not as rich as the United Kingdom. They're not going to give me as much free stuff as the United Kingdom. I think I'm going to go to the United Kingdom. You bring this up to these people, and, and their answer is always the same. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. They can't see it. A grown-ass man walks into a locker room full of chicks. Starts with lifting weights with them. They can't believe how strong this lady is. Ilhan Omar. Unbelievable. California shuts down its high-speed rail. Now listen, th 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 at this point it's just getting kind of hilarious. Years ago, years ago, we voted, or not, uh, to, to build a high-speed rail that went from Los Angeles to San Francisco, right? Now, there's something that you need uh, for all of you. It doesn't matter what state you're in. When your politicians come to you and they start saying, we need to tax you more because we need to put in a rail system, you need to get into the habit of asking your politicians why. And when they say, well, because something's got to be done, that's when you know that they're just trying to spend your money, right? Here's what they'll always tell you. This is, what they, this is what they did in Los Angeles, and I'm sure this is how it happens in the rest of America. They'll come and they'll say, we need a high-speed uh, rail system. It's very expensive, right? This is, this is how politicians wash money. They'll say, we need a high-speed rail system because the streets, you know, you've been on the 405, it's packed. Now, if we just put this high-speed rail system in, then people will be able to park their cars at a train station, and they can get on the train, and they can go to where they're trying to get. Thus, leaving a beautiful, open paradise of a highway open for you. Right? That's exactly, that's exactly what happened in California. Hey, man, you have to travel to 10, you have to travel to 405, you know, you have to travel to 101. Are you having to drive all the way in from Bakersfield? You know, well, here's what you do. Oh, boy. Sorry for the noise in the background. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to put in a high-speed rail. People will just be able to get to San Francisco in two hours. It's going to be great. It's going to... All these people, these, these poor people, they're going to take the train, and they won't be clogging up your beautiful highway. You're going to be able to sit alone in your car playing your Michael Bolton or your... What's that lady from Canada? What's the Canadian's lady name? She just released that demonic uh, commercial for baby clothes. What is that lady's name? Yeah, it doesn't matter. But uh, you, the, let the poor people... Let the poor people take the train. And you can sit alone in your bucket seats... 
and just cruise on into work, man. It's going to be like a knife through hot butter, boy, baby. Just blam. All the poor people will be on the train. But they fail to mention to you that it, it's like millions of dollars per mile of track. Like it's very expensive to build a train. And now, now that we've spent, I, God knows how much we've spent. As Californians, there's no telling how much money has been spent on this, on this rail system. Uh, but they shut it down. And now it's gone. And all that money that has already been spent, there's, we can never have it back. And you bring this up to, to, to leftists. This was Jerry Brown's baby. Jerry Brown is a notorious... He spends money... Like, it's... You ever go to the Indian casinos? Right? Just for, just for the buffet? Right? And you say, ah, I'm just going to spend 20 bucks. I'll put 20 bucks. Come on. Grab your wife. Look, it's only 20 bucks. Right? And you go to the buffet. You stand in that big-ass line. And you pay your 30 bucks per head. And then you get in there, and baby, they got the they got the big, they got that big shrimp thing, right? You know the big shrimp thing, that big, just like an ice sculpture. There's shrimps everywhere, shrimps. And then over there, they got that they got that prime rib, yo, right? And then over at the kitty's place, they got the pizza and the spaghetti's, all that. Like there's something for everybody, and it's wonderful. It's not worth thirty bucks, but at the same time, it's like yeah, but. I just ate literally whatever the F I wanted all in one sitting. And you think that you're going to sit there for hours, but you can't. Like, you get that first plate in and you're just like, oh, God. Sorry, everybody. Another jihadist is trying to join my Telegram group. Sorry there, Habibi. No joining my camp today. And then after you're done stuffing your face full of delicious food, you walk out into the casino, right? Your wife there, you got your kids, maybe. And you say, honey, let's put this 20 bucks in the, you know, I don't know, whatever it is that you play. And then you see the gambler, right? You see the guy that's got the itch. And he's at the tables and he's just like, you know, he's just putting stacks and stacks of chips. And it's like, oh no, 16 I'll stay. Dealer's got 21. Oh, puts down a couple hundred dollars more. Oh, he's going to hope for this one, hope for this one. Oh, oh, good. Oh, I got an 11. Oh, I'm going to double down. Oh, I got a 13 and a, and, a, and, a, and a 16. And the dealer's got a 21. Oh, and that guy just keeps dumping money, dumping money. You've seen that guy. He's got beads of sweat rolling down his face. That's Jerry Brown. That's how Jerry Brown spent money. I could sit. I could do an entire show. There was this thing that uh, he did where it was like he's, it was millions of dollars for these college students to go research the stupid like smelt in the American River or something like that. Some little bug that lives out there. Millions of dollars, and it's like, dude, the Central Valley of California is dying. Right? You need to build a pipeline of water to those farmers now. Wouldn't do it. Go, to go, go, go to Google Images and just Google image recent pictures of the Central Valley of California. Your food supply, America, America, your food supply, it's dying. And Jerry Brown killed it. And, and this, this high-speed rail that just got shut down, that is a symbol of Jerry Brown and his spending. Now it's over, and there's no getting that money back, just like the gambler. Lucky for you, you get to go home and eight hours later, take a big old poop. Speaking of uh, billions of dollars, so Donald Trump. <coughs> Speaking of billions of dollars, Donald J. Trump gets a uh, billion dollars in change for the wall, right? There's a lot of people thinking a lot of different ways about this. I'm a salesman. I'm a hell of a salesman, too. And this is one thing I love about Trump is that when he's talking sales, I, it, it resonates with me. Like, you know, like when you go to church and the pastor says something, it's just like, boy, it's like a, you take like a tuning fork and hit it on something to hold it close to your ear. And it's just that, that pure noise that comes out of it. 
when Donald Trump is talking about sales stuff, it's just like, oh, I see what you're doing there. Donald Trump goes, yeah, I don't like it. I don't like it, but hey, you know, it's, everything needs to... He goes, uh, negotiation is always fun. or something. I can't remember exactly what he said. But he's saying like, oh, this is far from over. This is far from over. I tell you I need five and you come back with one. You do know that I can just say national emergency, everybody, and bang, I got all the money I need. That's on the table, dear Democrats. That is within my executive power to do. And there would be nothing you could do about it. You could piss and moan and drag it through court and whatever, but the money's going to start flowing as soon as I tell you to. Tell you to. You might be able to get some of it back, but, you know, it's, uh, you know, I can do that. Here's the thing, though. This is, this is what's concerning to me. The wall's going to get built. That, there's, uh, the wall will be under construction and fully funded before uh, November of next year. Because Donald Trump wants to still be president afterwards, and his whole, his whole presidency hangs on that issue. There's good explanations for, for everything. There's good ep- explanations on why, you know, the Affordable Health Care Act thing hasn't gone the way that we were told it was going to go. We all seen how Paul Ryan was a traitor. He was a Republican in name only. We all saw, we all saw what, what happened there. And that's going to continue to get fixed. But the big thing is the wall. The wall goes up, it, he, then he's, uh, Trump gets shoehorned in for another term. That's the way it's going to go. You will see the money for that. So that's not what's bothering me. The thing that bothers most of us is, well, why is it that Nancy Pelosi and Chuck Schumer voted for this exact same thing? They wanted the wall when the other guy was in office, and now they don't. It was moral when Obama was president. Now it's immoral. How, what, what happened? What happened there? Without getting too far into it, here's, here's the thing. And this is, I don't want to get too far into conspiracy theories, but here's a fact. The fact is, uh, this uh, uh, El Chapo guy, who just, you know, he just got caught, just got in trouble. Uh, El Chapo's personal secretary made the claim, right, now this has not been proven, uh, but with the dollar amounts that we're talking about here, it's, well, I'll get into that. Mexico's former president took $100 million as a bribe from drug lord Joaquin Guzman, otherwise known as El Chapo. The cartel leader's secretary uh, said that in a New York courtroom, so under oath. So there's a couple of things there. One... When you're under oath, you have to be very careful if you're going to knowingly lie. And a hundred million dollars is not something that you're going to lie about because it's a hundred million dollars is a mountain of money. So you're not going to go in there and lie about that. There's somewhere there is proof. And what the what this uh, person said <coughs> was that. President of Mexico, Enrique Nieto, Nieto, Enrique Peña Nieto, asked for $250 million and got $100 million. The thing about that is, is that there is a picture of President Enrique Peña Nieto hanging out with none other than Nancy Pelosi and Beto O'Rourke in the same picture. Now there's there's uh, you know Snopes thing saying that's false. That's not what's false. There were people alleging that the picture of Enrique Enrique Peña President Nito was actually El, El Guapo or El Chapo or whatever his name is, but it's not. That's the he's the pres he was the former president of Mexico, and it's been alleged by El Chapo's personal secretary that they paid him one hundred million dollars. There are there's traces. If, if Mr. Nito has $100 million somewhere, that, you can't hide a mountain. That money is somewhere. And if it turns out that the reason why 
Nancy Pelosi and Beto O'Rourke and their ilk are slow to build that wall is because they fear El Chapo? Because they took money from Nito? Oh boy, when that wall gets built, we might see some hit jobs. If that wall gets built and somebody puts a pill in Nancy Pelosi's brain, that was El Chapo. Saying, I paid you $100 million to make sure that my, my transit lines for my product are always left open. What do you think, if, it, if indeed that allegation is true, and I certainly believe it is, all the evidence says that it is, and Mexican politicians are... Their, their willingness to receive bribes is stuff of legends. It's celebrated where they come from. Those Spaniards, man, by the way, Mexican presidents are never Mexican. You go look at a picture of a uh, handsome Enrique Pena Nieto. Go look at his face. Pull it up on Google. That's not a Mexican. That is a Spaniard. And it's different. All right? And Spaniards love taking bribes. You go pull up a picture of Mr. Guzman, that's a Mexican. That is not somebody who, who hails from Spain. That's somebody who's got Azteca, Azteca or Mexica blood in him. Mr. Nito, there's no Mexica blood in him. Anyways, if that dude paid $100 million to the president of Mexico, what on earth do you think he was buying? Was he just being super generous? What do you think he was buying? A hundred million dollars is not what you pay to get out of prison. A hundred million dollars is not what you pay to pay off judges. If you pay a hundred million dollars, it's because you're, you're building a highway. And you're, you're preserving the highway that you're using. And if that highway runs through the living room of Bateau O'Rourke, whose family, uh, what was it, his mother is a judge? They got accused of bribery from the cartels before. Dude, if that wall gets built and Beto O'Rourke ends up uh, burned alive with a tire around his arms, that was El Chapo. And the reason why they got put down was because they failed to hold up their end of the bargain. Boy, you take the devil's money. You take the devil's money, you better do what he tells you to do. And if you are unable to, to keep that wall from getting built, if that wall gets built, old El Chapo is going to reach out from his prison walls. He's going to find you. I'll be very interested to, to, to see what happens there. And yet you show that picture to people and you, 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 you put those facts together and they'll say, oh, no, 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 no. The Nancy Pelosi, she's a good person. Beto O'Rourke, he just loves America, man. They can't see it. A grown man walks into a locker room says, Hey girls, I'm one of you now. They can't see it. It's one of the most bizarre things. That's the show for now, everybody. Listen, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to chop this up on YouTube. I hope you guys pay attention. Please support the show. We need money over here, yo. PayPal.me slash archadvocate. PayPal.me slash archadvocate. We need some green up in this machine. And uh, I will talk to you all tomorrow.